Welcome back, day eight to Project Cafe Racer Booster Build Thingy, and today I want to just do the rest of the little bearings in the back end. There are six small, tiny, short link bearings, and it's exactly the same principle as the other, what, two, three, four, five, six, seven or so that I've done already, so I'm not going to talk you through it. There's no need for that. You've seen exactly what goes on. I've explained the different pieces as I go along and the use of the blind bearing puller kit, so I'm going to use that today. I'm going to use a little press today, and I'm going to have loads of fun putting the last six bearings in, and that's it. Then there's just the headstock bearings to do. Now, I may or may not get to the point of actually rebuilding the back end today because I've got to put the disc on and I want to do that carefully because it's a very important job and also put sprocket on the other side, which is part of the chain of sprocket build. So that may be next. You know, I'm trying to do all this in some semblance of a sequence so I'm not going over myself and treading over the same footprints twice. Anyway, today, six bearings to replace in the short link. So let's just get on with it. Welcome back. All these bearings, every single one of them smells of sulfur, like rotten eggs, that kind of diff oil smell, gearbox oil stuff when it's really old. So it's a sure sign that they've probably never been replaced. And if the bearings aren't rusty and you still get that smell, you can actually clean them out completely and re-grease them if you want to. If you can't or aren't able to or can't afford the bearings to replace them, it's the next best thing is to strip, clean and re-grease them every five years or so. And as I've said many times, I seriously believe that things like this, wheel bearings, swing arm bearings, all that sort of thing should be a long-term consumable service item. Meaning that after maybe 10 years, they just get replaced as a matter of course, because as you've seen yourself, you can't see what's in there. You can't see what's going on inside that bearing when it's on the bike. And often like the wheel bearings, you can't see what state they're in until you rip them out which time they're not good anyway. So, because you can't inspect them, they absolutely should be a service item. But hey, no one's listening. Yeah, another one. All full of rust and dead badges. You. Right, as with all these things, this last one's decided to fight me. Uh, the, the bearing is gripping the casting so much that the puller itself, as much as it can pull it, can just pull the die out and that can damage the die. Sometimes you just need a bit of shock on it to break that grip and then it will pull out nicely. So, resort to the slide hammer for the last one. There we go. Last one.
Right, there we are. Now, as you can see, you can use a good old vice as a press if the situation allows it, and these little things are perfect for that. I can put all four of these in using the vice because it's a record number five. It's a big enough vice to come back and allow me to do the side ones as well. But there's a couple of things very quickly. If you're going to use a vice to press your bearings in, these bearings, especially these little needle rollers, they are quite fragile and it doesn't do to put them in with any roughness whatsoever. They've got to go in gently. And there's a couple of things with the vice that you need to know. So let's bring you in close and I'll show you what I mean. It's quite important if you're going to do this that you don't do it the wrong way and damage the bearings. Show me. Right, the first thing is the bearing itself. These little needle rollers, as you can see, you've got a flat side there where the sheet metal's been squeezed in and it's a nice flat surface to press against. If you look at the other side though, it's tapered. So if you were to press against that, there's a risk you can actually crush that in, which would damage the bearing. So when you put them in, when you're gonna press the bearings in at any point, always if you can, make sure you press on the flat side that's not gonna be damaged by the pressure. Now the next thing is the vise. Nice parallel jaws, no knurling inside them, but there is a danger if you're pressing in like this at any point, as you press them in, if your bearing comes above such as this or below, then you're gonna get a crease made by the top of the vise on the bearing itself. So what I'm doing is using these discs that I use for the puller normally, putting that behind the bearing so I'm getting a good solid face pressing all the way around the bearing and not potentially the edge of the vise, which there on this corner could cause a pressure damage on the top. When you press it in, it's got to be nice and uniform all across the face of the bearing. And make sure that when you press it in, you don't lean too hard on it if it goes tight. If it goes tight, come off it, because it might have gone out of line. If it goes out of line and you keep pressing, you can actually crush and destroy the bearing itself. So nice and carefully, let's do the next one. Now, I just want to show you this if I can. Um, if you're going to do this yourself, I know these videos often encourage people to have a go at this sort of thing themselves. So a little bit of info for you that might help you. These needle rollers, although they look sort of ambidextrous, universal, whatever, they are sided. They do go a certain way around. As I said just now, the end you're pressing in, the side you're pressing in on, needs to be the flat side. But that is also the outside. That's the correct side to be pressing against because you don't damage it, as I said. Also, though, there's a rubber seal in there. If you take a look at that, to show that these are sided, that they go one way round and not the other. And that is that there, around the inside, you can possibly see a little black rubber ring just inside the bearing. That's an oil seal, grease seal, little rubber seal. And then you see the rollers start. So the gap between the rollers and the outer edge of the seal casing, is about five mil on this particular bearing. If I spin it over, the rollers are right near the top and there's no seal. Now, naturally, the seal will always go to the outside to keep the weather out. So therefore, it's the side with the seal and the flat face that's outermost. If you're in any doubt, take photos of the bearings that you took out before you take them out. And there you know which way they go in. Simple as that. Also, when you press them in flush, because the rollers sit inside this casing slightly to one side. So when you press that in, I'll show you this. When you press these in, they'll go in flush with the press, but the other side it's not quite flush, there's a gap there. But, because if you remember with that bearing, the rollers sit slightly off centre inside the bearing, allowing room for the seal. So when I press that in, although that's flush with the casting, there's the flush edge of the bearing, then the seal, then the rollers. So if you press that in, so that that flat face of the bearing is flat with the casting, then the needle rollers will be in the centre of the casting, which is where they need to be. What? There, that big old blob of grease is all gone. You can sort of, there's a residue everywhere, but that big blob that I put in, it's all gone inside. So it's really important, absolutely vital, that you grease up these bearings and work that grease in. Push it all in behind the rollers. Some people even said heat them up so that the grease goes soggy. Well, I'm using a high melting point grease, so I don't really want to heat them up too much. This is just as good a way to do it. It will get the grease in there.
One new set of bearings. Job done. Just two left now to go in this casting on the bottom of the swing arm and then the spacer tube between the two. And just see if we can do these in the vise as well. We could do the whole lot that way, wouldn't it? Let's have a look. <laughs> yeah, nice one. I'll go in there a treat. Excellent. Okay, right, with that as you saw, I load up a load of grease inside the tube, same goes for this one, then you push the bearing tube through, as you push it through, it shoves out the excess grease, like a spud gun, it just shoves it out the other end, put it back in the tub, and what I've got in there now is a, a tube, an internal tube, that goes between the two bearings, it's captured by the oil seals, but inside it is a solid column of grease all the way around with hopefully no air in there whatsoever, and if there's no air in there, then there's nowhere for the water to sit at all because the water won't displace the grease unless it's jetted in and it ain't gonna be. So that should last the lifetime of the bike now, hopefully. <laughs> there we go, right. So they're all greased up, they're ready to go. Now I've got to start cleaning up all the fasteners to put it back together and I'm gonna take that left hand exhaust off because I can't get the bolt out and I need to clean it thoroughly before it goes back in. So let's get the exhaust off and set the wire wheel up and hopefully I'll get that done as well. Ooh, <laughs> class. That literally did just fall off. <laughs> God, surprised I got home with it. And it's not on the road somewhere. Right. Now, someone said to me in the comments, hands up who you were, that the torque arm bolt just pushes through. It's just a bolt and a nut, and there's no thread in there. Well, I can't see anything in there because the clamp's in the way but it ain't moving, it proper ain't. I put some WD-40 on it the other day as you saw, and it just does not want to shift. <clears throat> One more try. I'm not gonna break it. It's getting tighter now, so I'm going to leave that, soak it a bit more. A little bit longer, then we'll get some heat on it next time. I'll give that 24 hours properly soaked up like that, and then that will come out. Right, now because you all nag me, and I know you only nag me because you love me, uh, a Y wheel, proper Y wheel to go on my old grinder. Now I haven't used this thing for years. It's only a cheapy Chinese thing, but it goes round and round. And that's enough. If I put that in there, I'll be able to clean all the bolts up.
Right, there we go, that was it. Day eight done, tick, that's out of the way. Short link bearings, all six of them replaced and the spacer tubes, all brand new stuff. Also the little shims, um, when you order your short link bearings, you can order these as well. They're the little precision shims that go between uh, the front mount, which is that one. They go on the outsides of the front mount like that and space it out between the frame. So it's important to get those as well because with time, and corrosion, they will grow. As you saw, they sort of expand in size and they warp a little bit, so just get those as well. They only cost pennies. All of it replaced. Really chuffed with that, and also thanks for the nuds to get a wire wheel. Yes, I know I should have got one. It's always on the list. It's just the length of the list that varies, but that is the outcome. Get yourself a wire wheel. Thanks to all the advice and all the nagging from you lot. I've done that, and there we are. Check them out. Those bolts are lovely. That was definitely motivation worth doing because those bolts, as you saw, looked absolutely dire. They were awful. So bad, in fact, you might have thought, well, I'll just replace those. It is your suspension bolts on a bike like that. But hey, look at it, brand spanking new. If when you wire wheel them up, there's all pitted and corrosion in there and it just won't come out and they've actually corroded in, then you know to replace them. But these have come up like brand spanking new. There's not a mark on them. Now they are lock nuts. So all I'll do with these is put some nice anti-seize on them when I reassemble all that, do them up. And that will mean that when I do them, undo them in the future, should that day come, then it won't come undone like a barn door creaking like they did before. So there we are, that's it. The rear end can't go in yet, unfortunately. Um, everything else is ready. The shock's going in as it is. There's no leakage on there. There's no pitting on the, on the ram. It's absolutely superb. Just looks rusty, but that's what I want for the rat rod look. So that's absolutely cool. But all the bolts are ready to go. There's nothing wrong with that shock whatsoever. That's going straight back in the bike once I've got the link plates. Now these link plates, dog bones, call them what you like, these are lowering ones. They're longer than the standard ones, which lowers the back of the bike. So I've got to get rid of those and get some proper ones, proper length. I've ordered them, they'll be about three or four days. And once that comes, I can start to reassemble. So in the next video, we will put the disc on the back wheel, the sprocket on the back wheel, and then I can reassemble all this stuff, ram it all back in the rear of the bike. And that's the back end done, tick. All I've then got to do is pop the chain on and I can move to the forks. The forks is the next thing, the next major thing to come up. I've got the headstock to do piece of cake that'll be a video that's just easy peasy i've done five videos of that now i think but it's always handy to do it for different bikes because it's easy to find but one sadly one of the fork legs has got to be replaced it is completely buggered there's a hole if you like worn right through the chrome down to the nickel that you can't repair that it has to either be reground and re-chromed or just replaced which is what i'm trying to do i'm so trying at the moment to source a pair of hybrid forks or there's a couple of other GSXR bikes that have the same forks. So I'm going to try and do all that cross-referencing and see if I can get myself some forks for this. I'm talking to the guy that I got the bike from. He's looking out for me too. He's a great guy, a very genuine guy. And if he says he can find some, he'll just supply them, no problem. And I'll give him those ones back, dum de dum So there we are. That is it for the back. Uh, short link bearings done, tick. Next one, as I said, rebuild the whole back end. So there we are. Join us for that. I'll update the board. Take it easy, ride safe. See you next time.